All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we have a very interesting topic. Please invite your friends and share the link around with your friends. Today we are broadcasting in the Arabian Prophet, as before. Uh, the topic today is about the death of the amazing prophet who was able to go to the seven galaxy overflying donkey. But yet he did not tell us what he saw in his way, except that he saw Moses and he have a curly hair. And he saw Adam was eating some carrot. And uh, David was singing songs. And Suleiman was chasing girls. And you know, tons of stories. <clears throat> but today the topic is more important than all of this. Maybe many of you do not know that the Shia until now they are divided about the death of Muhammad. And the question I made before, when the Muslims, they did their best trying, there's tons of videos, if not thousands of videos made by Muslims to respond to what I said, with all the reference, which nobody can really even argue about. The video I made before, it was about Muhammad was killed by the poison <clears throat> which is the reference shown us in the Muslims' books, where the reference shows that Muhammad himself, he reported that he was killed by poison. And this poison, according to Muhammad, is the one who ate in Khaybar. Khaybar is a Jewish tribe and Jewish uh, town where Muhammad, he slaughtered and killed as many as he can of the Jews and he slaves their women and their children. But one of the women slaves, as usual, Muhammad, when he enslaved women, they take them, the old women, they take them to the kitchen to be slaves for cooking, cleaning, garbage, you know. You spend the rest of your life slave of a Muslim. And the women, she is good and pretty, like Safiya as an example. Muhammad, he take her to himself for sex, entertainment. And that was the case for all those who've been enslaved by the filthy cult of Islam. As you see in the front of us, Muhammad himself reporting that he believed that he is dying and the pain which he feel, according to Muhammad, is because of the poison he ate by that Jewish woman who put it for him in the cooked goat which Muhammad he stole from her tribe. So Muhammad here reported clearly, O oh, Aisha, I feel, I feel. So the one who report the hadith here is Aisha, and from Aisha there is many, as usual, carry on the hadith. So Muhammad saying to Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my orta is being cut from that poison. <clears throat> now here, there is a very strong reason to believe, uh, if you are a Muslim who believe Muhammad is a prophet, and the Muslim believe that Muhammad is a person who inspired by God, and he doesn't say things unless it is from God. If you remember when a, when, a, when a guy, he came to Muhammad and he told him, my brother, he is suffering from pain in his belly, in his stomach. Muhammad told him, go and tell him to drink honey. Then the guy, he came again. His brother is getting more sick. And, uh, Muhammad told him, drink honey, etc. Three, four times. And then at the end, Muhammad, he screamed at him and he said to him, your brother's stomach told a lie and Allah told the truth. So Muhammad claimed that even when he gave a medicine or talk about a belly of a person, even that advice is coming for him from Allah. Because Muhammad did not even ask the guy, 
what even the problem what he feel do he have a fever no it's just the guy he told him my brother his stomach is hurting him so he told him take honey and he claimed that when the guy he is not recovered that because the stomach of his brother is telling a lie and Allah told the truth so Muhammad here confirmed that when he, when he speak about something in the stomach or something in the belly or something in the body he claimed that his knowledge is coming from God and there is no way here Muhammad is mistaken about how he is dying which means by poison for sure now the question is <clears throat> Muhammad is, is inspired according to Muslims and that means he knew for sure it was Khaybar and I made a video about it you can go and watch that video which is very backed with reference and the logic which can destroy Islam actually because this incident here prove <coughs> that Muhammad is a false prophet because if you remember in the Quran there is a verse in the Quran saying uh, supposedly Allah saying if Muhammad is fabricating Quran, Allah will cut his order. That can be found in chapter 69. You can read it from verse number 44, 45, etc. to 46. And you will see it says clearly that if Muhammad is, if, if he is fabricating, inventing word claimed to be from God, God, which is his name is Allah in this case, we should certainly size him by his right hand and we should certainly then cut off the artery of his heart. And this is exactly what Muhammad reporting what happened to him. So that is a disaster in every way, in every mean. Because it cannot be an incident or just an accident that Muhammad, he died in the same way he claimed that if he invented Quran, which means if he's a false prophet, God will cut his artery. <clears throat> now, the story have other side. Please, guys, invite your friends. Not many people know that we are already in Arabian prophets, so invite them and tell them. But the other side of the story, that the Shia believe that Aisha and Hafsa, they killed Muhammad. And maybe it's hard to believe to see what the Shia, even they call those women, what kind of names they call them. Aisha is the daughter of Abu. Bakr Hafsa is the daughter of Umar ibn al Khattab, and obviously, Muhammad he married their daughters just to get their support and could to give them hope that they will be the caliphate, which means the one I marry his daughter, he you know he will have a part, a share. So, what the Shia says, if we go and look for the some Shia. Uh, websites you will find the Muslims they have tons of articles Aisha and Hafsa killed the Prophet Muhammad here if you go there's a video this is uh, by by uh, by Sheikh uh, <clears throat> um, I forgot his name uh, Habib I think his name is Habib this Sheikh is a Shia Sheikh you can play his video by the way uh, as you see here Aisha killed the Prophet Muhammad chapter 1 this is in English you can watch it I'm not going to play it so those are sheikhs high scholars and this guy is a supporter of Hezbollah uh, as you see here the, the the logo is the one who is posting this article which is leading us to understand that the Shia and Hezbollah they believe Aisha she is an anti-islam and she is a very bad woman and a criminal and she killed their prophet and she is the enemy to the point the shia not only consider aisha a person who killed their prophet you might find even things go so far 
This is a Muslim Shia. And look at the title. Did Aisha become a whore after she killed Rasulullah? Remember, I'm not the one who's saying anything. This is the Shia. Aisha said, the verse of a Rajam, <clears throat> and by the way, the link is the, in the info of the video, if you like to open it from your side. Aisha said, the verse of a Rajam stoning and suckering an adult Ten times were revealed and were written on a paper and kept under the bed. We know this hadith where Aisha she claimed that a goat ate the Quran. And I believe this goat uh, mostly is paid by Aisha. Uh, I mean, this is what the Shia are trying to say. The Shia are trying to say that, actually, let us read more. Let us first note that the verse. Verses of the Quran were eaten by a goat. So according to Aisha, therefore her followers, which means the Sunni, who assume Aisha and the Umar follow the Sunnah of Muhammad, the Quran incomplete. Funny, funny, how Shia are accused of following different Quran <laughs> and saying the Quran is incomplete when the Sunni books prove that they are in fact describing themselves and they are or there are other sahih hadith which say entire surahs are missing from the Quran. So what this guy is trying to say, the Shia believe that the Sunni Quran is a fabricated, it's not a true. All right? It's not a true uh, 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 thing. And what we will see in front of us, this guy looked like he is trying to say that Aisha is behind this story for a reason. Shia claimed that Aisha no longer the mother of the believers as she was divorced. From the prophet S A W W W W W dot com by Ali, as after the battle of the camel, she did not meet the conditions mentioned in the Quran. Uh, guys, those who they are, uh, thank you, uh, Christian by choice. Guys, don't make a donation here, don't make a donation because YouTube is taking 70%, and I do not know how to take it off. It's a, it's a theft. Like now you send me a donation of five pound, YouTube is going to take three of them. You believe it? 70%. So if anyone want to do donation, go to Patreon, make one time donation and stop. In the, between the first and the second, the, the sixth and the month, they uh, they uh, collect donation and then you know you can cancel your, your subscription for donation if you want to make one time donation, all right? Yeah, they are taking 70% of any donation, so it's it's a theft. I mean, what the hell, 70%? <laughs> you guys, you send the donation to me, YouTube take it. <laughs> and until now, I get nothing. I don't know whenever uh, when they are going to ever to send anything. Anyway. Uh, so Shia claims that Aisha is no longer the mother of the believers as she was discovered from the prophet S-A-W-W by Ali as after the battle of the camel she did not meet conditions mentioned in the Quran to stay in your houses. Anyway, the article is long and the article all of it to support one thing, to support the title. Do you see the title? Do you see, guys, the title? The title is very simple. Did Aisha become a whore after she killed Rasulullah? And this is what the Shia believe. So you can read that uh, the, the whole article for yourself if you are interested to see why the Shia, they believe that Aisha, she was a whore. There's a hadith about Aisha. Uh, she used to decorate uh, uh, slaves girls 
and send them in the street so she can hunt young boys of Quraysh all right so this is the hadith the Shia they use it big deal to prove that Aisha she was a hooker however this is not really my topic my topic is did Aisha and Hafsa kill Muhammad this is another article from a website it's called ask the Sheikh the Sheikh which means the scholar all right it, my Skype right now is not open because I want to finish first the topic before we can take any call was the Holy Prophet murder a um, uh, uh, or did he die in a natural death question was the Holy Prophet poisoned or killed and murdered or he did die and whatever the answer in general the famous opinion among the Shia and the Sunni scholars that the Prophet was poisoned by the Jewish women that's a that's a lie that's a lie the we just saw that the Shia, big part of them, the most of them actually, believe that Aisha and Hafsa, Aisha the daughter of Abu Bakr, and Hafsa the daughter of, of Umar, they are the one who killed Muhammad by put, putting poison for him, let him die slowly. However, the Sunni, a huge part of them, they agree with the Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, which is saying clearly that the Prophet uh, was poisoned by the goat which he ate in Khaybar. All right. Now, here the scholar, supposedly in this website, is trying to give his best of his op opinion. However, there's a problem with the content of narration and the narration of the Jewish women says that Muhammad uh, were to eat from the food. This is what they prove he is not a prophet. Therefore, if we believe that the Prophet ate this food and was poisoned by it, we are, we are adopting a prophecy, his prophecy, or let's say prophethood. In addition, in addition, uh, the Quran state that we protect you from the people, indicating that the Prophet was safe from such, you know, conspiracy. So this scholar here is saying, well, there is a problem with this hadith. The majority of the Muslims agree with it, but then there is other hadith says that the woman who made poison for Muhammad to eat from, she wanted to taste Muhammad if he is a prophet or not, and she told him, "Well, if you if your God save you from my poison, that's mean you are a prophet. If your God did not save you and you die, that's mean you are a false prophet." So he's saying here we have a problem. The problem is. If we agree with this hadith, that's mean this woman, she proved to us that Muhammad is a false prophet. As you see in the front of your eyes. And this is exactly what happened. Other evidence for the prophet being murdered come from the narration of Imam as sadiq Okay, Al Imam as sadiq There is none amongst uh, uh, there is there is none of us but is killed by the sword or by poison imagine all the family of Muhammad killed either by the sword or by poison the problem with this narration you know like here I just uh, given you some ideas Aisha said we gave him PBBUH medicine while he is ill. He PBBUHBOOH kept sing, uh, signaling to us not to give him the medicine. We thought it uh, be uh, the dislike of an ill person for taking a medicine. So here they are saying, well, you know what? The Shia, they claim that she was forcing him to drink something he don't want to drink. And obviously here, Muhammad is in a very tough, bad situation to the point he cannot even stop Aisha from pushing something in his mouth. Aisha and Hafsa. So they are feeding him 
a kind of medicine and Muhammad don't want this medicine and Aisha she is saying well we thought uh, uh, you know that he is not happy he don't like the the medicine because it doesn't taste good all right uh, don't don't delete the Muslim who says about something about money don't talk about money Abdul for us here we don't say to people if you don't pay us money we are going not to give you private consultation please don't don't stop the Muslim from saying things because let us let us get them busted it's your profit your profit not me you see anyone attend my private consultation for free people they give donation don't give donation I don't get angry from anyone everybody is welcome I love everybody it's your prophet who said oh people and he made a verse about it in the Quran if you don't give money to the prophet don't ever come if you want to do private consultation with the prophet you have to pay me first this is your prophet not me you see here I stay for many hours and I have thousands and thousands and thousands of videos for free the the, the poor is welcome before the rich I'm not like your prophet the can the cult consultant you who believe when you you consult the messenger in a private spend something like come on like, what wrong prove it wrong it's in front of you do you see it if you want to meet the prophet you have to spend something anyone can call me live for free anyone can ask me a question for free anyone can come and join us for free it's your prophet doing the scam claiming that he is a private consultant and he will not function your profit is the same as a pepsi cola machine you put coins in the hole he work you don't put coins he's dead this is your profit and the proof in the front of your eyes don't tell me it's wrong do you see it what kind of a prophet he will not do a private consultation to a muslim unless he pay did Jesus ask for money for a private consultation? Huh? But you criticize a Christian priest, but you are requesting money. I am not requesting money. Did I request money, guys? Somebody made a donation. I said, don't do it. Are you stupid or what? <laughs> he made a donation here. I said, if you want to do it, we have a website for that. Do you see me keep saying, make the donation, make donation? When the last time I said, make donation? You are stupid. You are an idiot. You see the Muslims, the Muslims, because they are jealous of what we do. They try to make it personal. Oh, this guy, he have a donation. I, when the last time I mentioned to those people who come here, hey guys, don't forget to donate to us. I don't say anything. They want to make donation. They are welcome. They don't want to make it. So you are jealous because you are upset for what we do. Donation is something willingly, and we don't really ask for it. I mean, we don't keep calling people to do so, but we are thankful for people to help and support. However, I welcome you Muslims to donate to me too, because look how much help I'm giving you. You people are following blindly a scam. His name is Muhammad, and I'm giving you my free consultation for free. So you should be the first one to donate. So I invite the Muslims to donate for us before the Christians. If you know how many Muslims left Islam because of me, you should donate to me more than the Christians. I am the best helper for the Muslims, not only for the Christians. And I invite you to leave the cult of Muhammad. As you see, he claimed that his God will protect him and nobody can hurt him. And then we find that all Muslims agree that Muhammad, he died like a rat by poison. Four years he is suffering because of poison. And his private consultation money is not helping him. Muhammad, he claimed to be a doctor and he take money for the private consultation. But yet he was dying by poison. Now we continue. Just I wanted to go to get the Abdul Basta. And by the way, there's tons of verses in the Quran. Muhammad is all about money. You see, Muhammad, he, he made even that the fifth of every attack is for Muhammad. The fifth, not only you have to pay him before the private consultation, not only that, Muhammad, he make a chapter speaking that the best of the booty should be given to Muhammad. So if Muhammad, if Muhammad decide, or let's say they have a booty, 
the booty Muhammad he have the right to take the best of it so let us say Muhammad he attacked my house and he found like uh, let us say I have a big TV screen Muhammad he have the right to take the big TV the rest will go to the Muslims this is Islam and I can show you the verse from the Quran you have to prove it guys when a Muslim he says to us Muhammad was the greatest man in earth why you didn't prove it to us okay let me let me do this guys let us do this what about right now right now we open our Skype and we ask Mr. Uh, what his name? MB to call me. What do you think, guys? And I, you know, I'm willing to stop my topic for a little bit just to see if you can prove to us that your prophet is the best of mankind. Why he is the best of mankind? Your prophet, he went to his own son house and he flirted with his wife when she is married. Is that what the best of mankind does? Imagine, imagine your father come to visit you when you are not home and then your father flirt with your wife and he say to her, praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart beat for you. Is that the, the behavior of the best of mankind? The best of mankind is the one who asked to marry a child the best of mankind is the one who order men to be their wives but yet he said to them don't break their bones like come on I mean <laughs> look how nice he is so when you say the best of mankind we want to know what is making him the best of mankind he was a scammer even the Muslims accuse him that he stole an underwear and that underwear was stolen itself from the booty which means Muslims are killing people, stealing their clothes. What kind of people they are? This is a savage prophet. Uh, let us see. My my Skype right now is open. If you like to call me, please feel free. I will be happy to receive your call so you can show us how Muhammad is the best of mankind. Uh, guys, again, uh, those who they are making donation here, if you want to make donation, you can make it in better you own better than here. I told you, I don't know really how to stop this donation here. Uh, YouTube is a thief like Muhammad. They are taking 70% of it. All right. America, highest number of pedophile homosexuality. Well, your prophet was a homosexual. Call me and I will show you the reference. Isn't it your prophet? He kissed a man down his belly and the man he was saying to him don't stop don't stop right there Isn't it your prophet who went inside the shirt naked with a man kissing his back Isn't it your prophet who used to have a gay in his house all day long Hello Isn't it your prophet who pee sitting like a woman and I can show you the hadith, the Arab saying, look at him, he, he pissed like a woman. And the highest gay number in the world is in Saudi Arabia. Go and check out. Even in Pakistan, Taliban, they have a Bazabashi boy who dressed like a, like a woman. And after that, they have sex with him. And you are talking about homosexual. All of you are homosexual. All of you are homosexual. Even your God in heaven, he promised you Tens of thousands of boys who they are very pretty and wearing clothes see through. But you are a coward, you will not dare to call me. Let us continue. You see, we are willing to go to any direction you wish. You name it, we take it. Call me. You will notice, guys, when we talk to a Muslim, right away he starts jumping like a monkey from topic to topic to topic because he say a topic, we beat him with it. So he jump, he changed the topic, we beat him with it. So like, uh-oh, like we are not making it. So let us jump. Now he will talk about Jesus. Just wait. Now he will talk about the Trinity. Just wait, it's coming. They cannot refute us. They cannot answer us. They have a stupid religion. And then what they do? What they do? Uh, you, your Bible is corrupt. A brother and sister, if you go to the book of John, chapter 18, verse 18, 18, and if you go to the book of Luke, 
you will see that it doesn't match together. The reason for that is proven that there is a corruption. Like, oh, hold on, hold on, Dakar Naik. You Muslims believe that this Bible is the Bible of Allah, and you are telling me that the Bible of Allah is corrupted. Thank you very much. That is additional proof that your God Allah is a scam. What kind of God he sent his book and he cannot protect his book? You see, the stupid Muslims, when they say to us that the Bible is corrupted, they are saying to us that the Bible of Allah is corrupt. They are not talking about my Bible. I don't have a Bible. I am not God. The book be belongs to the one, the author. Who is the author? God. So when the Muslims, they speak about the Bible is corrupt, they are showing us additional proof that Allah is nothing but a scam. Who is talking? Allah supposedly chapter 3 verse number 3 what it does say that it is Allah who sent those books which what which is the Injil and the Torah and the Abdul they keep saying to us that the book of Allah the Injil and the Torah are corrupt thank you very much that is that is a clear proof that your God Allah is a fufu is a susu is a mimi is a wawu what kind of God he cannot protect his book? I have many books. I challenge you to corrupt them, and I am not God. Change the topic, change the topic. <clears throat> anyway, we go back to Aisha. Aisha, Aisha, we will throw you infidel gay boys off the building and meditate. Uh, okay, okay, MB, 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 MB. Listen, Abdul, I advise you to drink camel urine, my friend. Cool down, cool down. Drink camel urine, and remember the Prophet saying that whoever trusts Allah is a fool. Do you want me to show you the verse in the Quran? Do you want me to show you? Let me show you. Hold on. Uh. Let us see. Let us see. Chapter 33, verse number 72. What the Quran is saying that Allah He offer to trust the trust. He offer it to who? To the sky and the mountains. Like what the heck? This guy is trying even to convert the mountains to Islam. <laughs> we did indeed offer the trust to the heaven and the earth and the mountains, but they refused to smart to undertake it, being afraid. Therefore, but the man undertook it and he was indeed unjust and foolish. So the one who take the trust of Allah is a foolish according to Islam. Keep going. Let us go back to Aisha, the mother of the believers. You are right. So the mother of the believers is accused by the Shia, accused with many crimes. Number one, she is the one who killed the Prophet Muhammad, the amazing Prophet, the most, the best, the best Prophet ever who have no prophecy. Remember Muhammad, he said, 1400 years ago, the moon is split and the judgment day is near. And the moon never split and no judgment day did come. And actually, he did not say near. He said, like in the corner, like his sight, right there. Additional proof that Muhammad is nothing but a scam. However, what the Muslims try to confess us with and imagine the Muslims are working hard to prove that to us that Aisha is a criminal and she killed Muhammad by the conspiracy uh, of uh, the daughter of Umar al Khattab, Hafsa. Both of them, they are of the wives of Muhammad. You know, Muhammad have nobody knows really how many wives Muhammad. Muslim they claim he have up to a thirteen, but I believe this is false. Nobody knows really how many women Muhammad he have, but I don't think even he used to have sex with them. I think he just you know, he need a company. Muhammad is like a child who is suffering from mental illness. Remember Muhammad, uh, uh, when he was a child, his family themselves, they throw him away to a nurse. But not really to nurse him, but because they are trying to get rid of him. Nobody of the family want to have Muhammad. Because from the start of his life, they thought, that he is possessed 
Muhammad, since the start of his life, he used to fall down in the ground. He have a seizure. And this is what you will see in my coming book when you read it about sex and Allah. So Muhammad, from the beginning of his life, is suffering from mental illness. And we showed you tons of reference of that before. And now Muhammad is in the hand of two women, and yet he is now in the most weak moment of his life. Obviously, he is dying. And Aisha, she is forcing a medicine on him. Aisha is forcing a medicine on him. And Muhammad don't want to drink this medicine. So the Shia, they believe strongly that Aisha is behind the death of Muhammad. And this is why you see a very aggressive statement coming from the Shia, from Hezbo Hezbollah, from the Mullah of Iran, uh, against Aisha and Hafsa. And the Shia believe that the Muslim Sunni are potatoes. They are not Muslims. And the Muslim Sunni, they believe that the Shia are potatoes and they are not Muslims. But Christian prince believe that both of you are potatoes and none of you dare to call me. And imagine, guys, a prophet of God, a prophet of God, but yet the Shia, they call his wife a whore. A prophet of God who he made the verses in the Quran saying that nobody can kill him for Allah protecting him yet they claim that two women they killed him now if you remember in the Quran it states clearly that the Quran even called Aisha and Hafsa and the other women they are kuffar if we go here we will find Muhammad making verses about them. In Tatuba, Ilallahi Fakada Sagat Kulu Bukuma, were in Tava Hara Alehi for in Allah, who Mawla, who were Jibreed on Wasari Hulmumini. Well, Malaika, etc. Chapter sixty six, verse number forty four. What happened? Muhammad obviously he lost his mind and he cannot control his wives, and his wife are beating the hell of him. So Muhammad he seek refuge by Allah and he claimed that Allah he sent him a fax or maybe a telegram or maybe a snapshot saying to the women if ye too turn repentance to him the fact or the word sagat aymanuhuma it does not mean uh, what they are translating sagat aymanuhuma which means they became close very close to be kuffar almost almost kuffar so their heart became the heart of kuffar and this is what the Shia they use always when they attack Aisha. That the Quran even speak about Aisha that she is a bad woman and she is a whore. Even Allah speak about her. And this is true. As you see, here is a speaking about two women and there's two parties. Two women and two parties. There's two parties. There's Republican and Democrat in the wives of Muhammad. In the Haram. So, Muhammad have a bunch of wives and they split it into Democrat supporting Hillary Clinton, which is Aisha in this case, and Republican supporting Hafsa, the daughter of Abu Bakr in this case. However, in this occasion here, both Republican and Democrat Hillary Clinton and Sarah Palin both they are united the front against the prophet peace upon him yeah this guy is changing our topic you know uh, abdul go and run all countries you went you are a hero you change the topic one more time i will i will ban you <clears throat> you idiot we are in here in afghanistan for 20 years what are you talking about and until now we are in iraq what's wrong what's wrong just shut, shut up and if America want to whip all, all your country, they can do it in in the, in the bush of a bomb. I'm doing stupid, unbelievable. Man. Like just just go for it, go for it. Go, eat, eat some zucchini. He left as a donkey, never came back as a horse. 
if you turn in repentance so Allah himself here is involving in the fight of Muhammad and obviously the wives of Muhammad they hate him very much to the point Allah himself need to be involved and he sent the ambulance to Muhammad we 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 and the rescue is coming and Allah he made a threat to the wives saying if you back up each other against him truly Allah is his protector guys this is the tone of talking of two women who they are not educated in the Middle East this is how my grandmother and your grandmother they will speak if they are living in the Middle East a hundred years ago if you don't repent and back up each other uh, 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 and my God is going to like what the heck this is God is talking are you sure this is how God talk listen to me lady let me tell you something if you don't stop and repent and you back up each other Allah and Zibleel and the angels and Sukutukumuku and Trump and Obama and Hillary Clinton and Shakam Borobina and Shakachuni Nakhshin and Chin Fong Chin Chong from Japan who is the master and the Bruce Lee they will join in the fight against you look at look at this guys this guy he brought everybody to the fight Allah is his protector and Jibri and all the Muslims 1.5 billion Muslim now they are taking the side of the Prophet in the other side there is two women and behind them there is the other wives of the Prophet and then all the angels I mean look at this fight man this is a scary Muhammad he did not ask for help such like this when he was fighting the kuffar When he was fighting a real army, he did not ask for this rescue. I mean, where is this rescue? Did not come when he was. And look, Allah is saying to them, "Okay, you know what? If you don't be, if you don't, if you are, they're not going to stop. Allah is going to exchange you with better consort. Better what? Better what? This is how God talk. If you don't behave, Allah will exchange you with better consort." True story. True story, my friend. So obviously, everything in the hadith, in the story, in the Quran, prove that Muhammad, he have a very and a lot of difficulty. With his wives, and the Quran is approving that. So it's not going to be a surprise if really Aisha she killed Muhammad. It's not going to be a surprise for me for a child who was raped by fifty-four years old when she was at the age of six. That one day she will seek revenge. You know what I mean, guys? Imagine you are a six years old, a man he grab you from the swine and he the swing and he take you to his lap. And this man is a 54 years old. What you will do to him? Not everybody can forgive and forget. So when the Shia they claim that Aisha she killed Muhammad, I don't blame them. Aisha she have a very high motivation to do that. She was raped by a criminal. This man he destroyed her childhood. What this child she knows about being a child. So the Shia, they have a lot of reasoning to believe that Aisha, she was killing Muhammad. And why not? 
and they are quoting a reference as you see coming from Muslim Sunni statement Aisha saying that they used to force medicine in Muhammad let us see if we can find this hadith in the website so we can have it more clear Here we go. We poured, we, we poured medicine in one side of the prophet's mouth during his illness, and he started pointing to us, meaning, say, "Don't pour medicine in my mouth." And you notice here, guys, Muhammad is not even able to talk. Is that correct? Look how horrible this death of Muhammad is. The Muslim they say to us that uh, Allah saved Jesus. That's what they say to us. Allah, He saved Jesus because Allah will not allow Jesus to be humiliated by the Jews. Look what's happening to Muhammad. Anyone saw the video of the uh, Ahmad Didat how he died? Ahmad Didat in the video, he can't even talk. In one of his videos, he said, as I remember. If I am lying, may, may God mute me. The guy, he spent about seven years, he cannot talk. You know, very ugly death. And now Muhammad is obviously muted. He cannot even say to them, don't give me the drink. I don't want it. We said, he says so because a patient dislike medicine. Do you see it? Because a patient dislike medicine. But this is the case for a child. I mean, this guy is a prophet and he is all wise. The guy, he went all the way to the seven heaven, a living galaxy in the top of a mule. So he is like an ex spaceman. I mean, Muhammad is not just any man. He went to the space. He is the first man to go to the space. Round the trip. In the top of a flying mule. By the way, guys, I'm planning this summer to go to the seven galaxies. Uh, but I'm not going to use, uh, you know, a mule or anything. Um, I, I will just share with you something, but please don't tell anyone. This is between us here in YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, you know, Google. Eh, yes, between us. Please, Muslim, don't record me, please. Uh, my dad, he used to have a piece of the flying carpet of the King Suleiman. Mm -hmm. True story. And I grabbed about five inch from that carpet. And I did not tell my dad about it. And you believe it or not. Even if it's five inch, it can fly you anywhere in the world. You remember last few months ago, I was in China. I just came came in March, right? You know, I was on my international trip. I did not take an airplane. Yes, I posted a video in YouTube that I was in the airport, but this is like a deception of Allah, you know. But the fact I was just visiting, I mean, I want to see how the how the I want to see what is going to perform better, my carpet or the flying flight uh, airplane. True story. So this man, who is named Muhammad, who went to the seventh heaven in the top of a flying mule, he is an ex-space man, which means he's a scientist, genius. There is no way he will not know that this medicine is for his good. So why Muhammad don't want to drink the medicine? The Shia, they come with their conclusion. That obviously the Prophet was inspired by Allah. He don't want to drink it because he knew it's poison. But the evil Aisha, she was forcing, and Hafsa, she was forcing the poison in his mouth. And look here, guys, what it says. It says, we said. Do you see the word we? Okay, how? Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. This woman, she is speaking about giving Muhammad what she called medicine as an act of we. Do you notice that? We. We. We who? 
the wives of Muhammad. So obviously, all the wives of Muhammad, based in the conspiracy of the Shia, are involved in the killing of Muhammad. Obviously, that means that Muhammad was hated by every single wife of his own. And all of them, they are partners in the crime. Now, I don't know if you are a Muslim or not. We have a good news for you. The case about your prophet, it might be solved. For now, like we have a DNA test, we have laboratories, we have FBI, we have many ways to do it. But I'm going to use a very super intelligent method from the Quran. Is it the Quran said that there is a story about a guy who was killed and Allah told Moses to bring some beef and beat the guy that did guy and he then he came back to life and he told them who is the one who killed him what about we do the same to Muhammad we go and we dig the grave of Muhammad and we beat him with some beef what do you say Muslims and then Muhammad will wake up for 30 seconds, we do not need more. And he will say, Aisha and Hafsa killed me, and he die again. Like she doesn't take even 30 seconds. If we go in the Quran, Hmm. I mean, do you see the story here? Yeah, this is an amazing story, and this is, must be a true story. Hmm. And we say it submit him, the murdered person, with some of it. Some of what? Some they say the penis of the ox, some they say his tail. Some they say his balls, some they say his shoulders, we do not know exactly, with an organ of the cow. And it's also said, read with me, read with me, I'm not saying anything, read with me, please. Also said with the tail or the tongue, like you beat the guy with the tongue of the cow? Makes sense because the guy will wake up and he will talk. <laughs> I mean, look how smart Allah is, unbelievable. So we have a dead guy. And we want to know who is the one who killed him. And Allah gave us a very fine recipe. You can use it, by the way, if you work for the FBI or CIA. Guys, this is very serious. This is very serious. Imagine yourself, you are a CIA or an FBI. Like me, you receive, you receive a phone call. Hello? Hello? Somebody is killed here. We found him. He's, he's dead now. Okay. Okay, please come fast. Okay. FBI now is in the way. But the FBI in their way, they will not just come with empty hands. They have to do or bring some useful tools which is according to to the advice of Allah. So they went to the farm and they grabbed what? A cow. Because it is a necessity for the FBI to solve this crime is to bring the tongue or the tail or the penis of the cow so they can beat the guy with it. 
and you will notice that this is not a Christian cow because a Christian cow will not work it must be a Jewish cow take a note because the verse there is speaking about Musa's look, look listen carefully she's speaking Hebrew oh, she's saying Habibi 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 Jack Sharon listen listen uh, I told you so they stopped in the farm and they brought a cow with them or the organ of the cow and then the tail I mean you whip the guy with the tail of the cow and that will make him come back to life that's astonishing man you know what uh, uh, I'm going to put in my refrigerator a tail of a cow each time I die but I need to get married because I need somebody to beat me after I die each, each time I, I die, I will ask my wife, please, if I die, something happened to me, you grab the tail of the cow from the refrigerator and you beat the hell of it, the hell of me with it, okay? Honey, I cannot beat you. I said, I said don't worry about it. Don't Just do it. The Quran says so. Muslims, what is that, man? This is a miracle. Allah, he performed miracle by the tail of a cow. Do we have any butcher here? Do we have any Muslim here? I mean, look at this. Beat it with an organ? Like, what the heck? The guy is dead, and now we are beating him with the organ of the cow? And you are telling me that Allah is not the best doctor? Guys, compare how Allah here resurrect people from death and how Jesus resurrect people from death. <laughs> hey, Muslims, why Jesus did not beat the guy with the cow to resurrect him from the death? Huh? And okay, what if Musa says he lived in the Hindu land? What he will do now? Huh? Imagine if Musa says he lived in India. In a village full of Hindus, and now he have to kill a cow and take the penis of the cow to beat the guy with it. I mean, this is even, I don't know. I, this is very dangerous. This is very dangerous. But I have to say, I have to say that Islam is a super duper intelligence religion, and it's full of miracles and science. And it's proven by science. There is a scientist, by the way. His name is Yama. He is Japanese. Japanese taken taken note. Yama I do lie Yama Suzuki Toyota Toyota uh, Toyota Toyota Honda Yama very well known very well known check the names check the names he said that it's true that you can bring a person from death but the, by the way guys hold on hold on I just remember something I hold on hold on I, I'm guys I'm really getting old imagine I am not even 16 years old now but my mom my mom is 14 by the way just between me and you uh I forgot I forgot that the Muslims they made this verse about the miracle of science anyone remember what is that anyone remember what the miracle of the Muslims they claim behind this verse <coughs> who remember what is the miracles the Muslims they claim behind this verse? Hmm. Let me sorry, let me find it for you. Oh boy. Guys, you will not believe it. You will not believe it. I'm going to go to Google and search in the front of your eyes. I mean, for sure, in front of your eyes, like what, what I would do in the back of your eyes. Like, come on, what kind of logic this guy use? Hey, he's an Arab. The human heart in the glorious Quran heard the pump of life, Quran and science. If, 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 if all of this, all of this, Mean. The best science and Islam images. Okay, hold on. All right. 
hurt the heart massage here there's a Google say uh, Quran science which one we take Google plus Google or Haruni here let us see Haruni here many miraculous feature in the Quran prove prove it is the word of Allah the fact are revealed in the verses through scientific fact the description of the best method codes that could never be known to anyone at that time if, 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 if all of this is about this verse this is all is about ver the verse and guys I mean <laughs> Stupidity sometime is amazing. Let us read together what the Muslims saying in their website. The same verse we are talking about, where Allah He told Musa to beat the guy with the cow. The Muslims they make it as a science about massaging the heart. Look, where in the verse it says massage the heart, you idiot. Where in the verse is speaking about massaging the heart and the guy he was killed not uh, not somebody having a heart attack and he's dying not dead yet to do CBR for him remember when you kill someone in a violently accuse each other it he was killed violently he was caught killed by a sword what heart massage you idiot the guy he died by a sword he bleed to death what heart massage will do to such a man so do you see how they take something very stupid in the Quran and try to turn it as if it is science and then look what they say hit him with part of it and then they say hit him part of it is massage but this is about the cow you guys look what it says here look in the interpretation in the in the, in the translation uh, in the explanation what it says just to show you how muslims are a bunch of liars they have no shame among the meaning of the arabic uh term bibadiha bibadiha translated as which with with part of it in the above verse is someone or some people in the context of that meaning the verse may reference may reference may Allah take you to the heaven my friend may Allah take you in the heaven of 7 11 and never send you back what do you mean me is that science of me may reference all the science of the Muslims they say me reference why they say me reference because if someone like me Christian Prince get them busted they will say to you didn't we say me reference <laughs> me reference to a heart massage you don't you just say that the guy was killed what this have to do with heart massage the guy is dead he is dead already violently and he was killed by a sword so what do you mean a heart massage <sighs> do you see how they try to fool you they think you are a fool all right Muhammad because he is a man he faced his enemy okay hold on hold on guys I you challenge to show me when 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 the time Muhammad was fighting face to face with with his enemy you're a prophet always he hide in the back and not only that when he while he was hiding a guy he throw a rock at him and he broke all his teeth and this is since the beginning of Islam and this is making me wonder how Muhammad was able to recite the Quran because imagine now I lost all my teeth so if I want to say Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, I will say it like this: Bismillah Madrathim, Aud Bilsahi Satar Satim, Athrul Dantat. I have no teeth. I, do you want to show you the hadith? Where is the brave Muhammad? Did Muhammad go after the guy who threw the rock at him? He ran away. He ran away to Aisha, and Aisha she started putting bondage in his mouth to stop the bleeding. Hello, you're a prophet. Was a brave? I want to see that. 
when since when as you see your prophet he asked Allah for help just to fight two women man two women but you know I agree with him women are scary to be honest with you don't ever if you are a prophet fight women ever as you see you don't want what happened to Muhammad to happen to you my friend this is what happened to a person who fight with his wife if he is a prophet. His wives, they made a united front party. Republican, Democrat, they joined together for the first time in history to fight the husband. Don't ever do that mistake. To the point Allah is involved in the fight. You see how brave he is? Muhammad is so brave to the point he needed Allah and Jibreel and the believers. And the angels, all of them to support him against two women, they are five foot tall. I mean, this is the hell of a brave man, man. <laughs> Here we go. He changed the topic. Was Musa saying this, guys? Do you see? Do you see the Muslims? How funny they are. We talk about his prophet now. We talk about Moses. Was Moses sinless? No, Moses was not sinless. Let me tell you why. You're a prophet. He promised that Moses have no problem with his balls. Do you want to see the hadith? Guys, Muhammad is the prophet of wisdom. Once the Jews, you know the Jews? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Those Jews are crazy people. Crazy people. The Jews accused Prophet Moses, may Allah bless his testicles, that he have a disease in his balls. I seek refuge. By Allah from such an accusation. If, 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 if. And Muhammad is the only one who discovered this story because it's inspired by God. And this story makes sense. He do me carefully. Abu Huraira reported Abu Huraira, the father of the kitten, as nightmare he called him, the kitten. <laughs> Supposedly, kitten is not cats. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, he said, uh, he is reporting the stories from Muhammad. Let me show you the hadith from Muhammad himself. Here we go. The prophet said, the people of Israel, do we have any Jew here in the crowd? Do we have any Jew here? Who is a Jew in the text? Who is a Jew? Guys, if there is any Jew in the text, grab him because let, let, let us let us investigate this issue. I mean, what's wrong with the Jews? Even Musa don't leave him alone. And they accuse him that his balls have a problem. How dare you? The balls of the Prophet Moses are the best balls proven by all laboratory in the world. To the point he used to have a cart in the front of him. He put his balls in the cart because they are so big and so heavy. And this is approved by science too, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. Let it go, let it go. It's wrong with those people. You see, guys, this is like a fake laugh. I mean, this is like the, the comedy show, stand alone show. People, they laugh. doesn't matter what the comedian he say. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, like, like, come on. Look at this. This is serious here. We're talking about prophet here. This is God, prophet, heaven, Musa's. Come on. The prophet said, okay, hold on. I cannot say this without background, background the music. Something very serious. We have to make it really, really serious. Where is, where is the serious stuff? I didn't know where the serious stuff is going. Uh -huh. Guys, something serious is missing from my serious file. What is the serious? This one? 
Yeah, this is very serious. Maybe this one here. Maybe, uh, no, that's not one. But there is something here serious. What happened? I don't know what happened here. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. I found it. Because this is need the background music. Once upon the time, the prophet said, the people of Israel used to take a bath. Naked. Naked. I have to stop here. Sorry. I have to stop here. I mean, look how the prophet is so smart. The prophet, he discovered that the Jews used to take a bath naked. I mean, how fantastic smart this prophet is. Who can know, know that unless he is a prophet? <laughs> Taking bath naked? I mean, I want to see Shahada. <laughs> My... My tongue is not moving anymore. I'm so that's that's astonishing, man. How he and and the Muslim to fix the problem, they said all together. <laughs> but in the height doesn't say that. You see, to fix the, st the stupidity all together. <laughs> Looking at each other. So the Jews guys are naked, naked, and they are looking at <laughs> <laughs> hey brother, what do you have there? Uh, this is my balls. <laughs> what a crazy Jews, man. What the crazy Jews, what the Jews are doing there. Oh boy. So the Jews used to take bath when they are naked, which is not usual. And they look at each other. The prophet Moses used to take a bath alone. They said, By Allah, nothing preventing Moses from taking bath with us, except that he has scrotal hernia. Uh, hold on, hold on. I need to train myself to say this word. Let me read it in the Russian way. Scrotal hernia. So the Prophet Moses, he have a problem with scrotal hernia. I mean, how this happened, man? Prophet Moses is infected with scrotal hernia. What the heck? The Jews, they believe that their prophet, he was an STD. He have a sexual uh, transmitted disease. What? Like what? Like what? what? <laughs> True story. I mean, look at this prophet. He is very serious about it. But guys, hold on. Allah will not leave the Prophet Moses alone. Look what happened. Let us continue the story, please. So once, Moses went to take a bath. And he put his clothes over a stone. And then that stone run away. Run away. Run away. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's something Muhammad did not report. When the stone run away, the stone was singing this following song. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.
this is stone have an mp3 player and maybe a smartphone and according to some reference it says that the stone was saying the following Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. This is how we do it, do it. Unbelievable. Moses, says he put his clothes over the stone. Trusting the faith is stone. He thought this is stone is a trustworthy stone. My friend, if you ever go to the beach, don't ever do that. Put your clothes on the sand. Because one sand cannot carry all your clothes. Be smart. A rock can. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. It happened. This is a true story. And then the stone run away with his clothes what the store run away with the clothes hey boys and girls do you understand close your eyes and imagine yourself watching cartoon alibaba he was in the beach he wanted to take a bath do you understand so he decided to take off his clothes and jump in the water. So he put his clothing in the rock. And after he jumped on the rock, I mean in the water, the rock, when he is in the middle of the water, waited for him because this is a smart Jewish rock. And you know Jewish, huh? You know what they do. Uh -huh. you, he put the clothes there and now the rock, she flee. I am sure this is a very convincing story. Do you agree with me? I'm sure that this is a big fat lie. Do you agree with me? Perfectly, you are Muslims because you agree about anything I say. It doesn't matter because nobody is listening. Is that right? Thank you very much. So the Prophet confirmed now to us an amazing, astonishing story about a rock stealing the clothes. Actually, if we go right now to the FBI website, you will see in the in the FBI website it says wanted, and there's a picture of a rock. This is true. Google right now if you don't believe me. Go to www.fbimusasrock.com, and you will find an image of the wanted rock. Until now, it's missing. For she stole the property. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. That the guy is this guy is taking witness of Muhammad. How, how you witness for Muhammad? You never witnessed, you never saw him. And can you witness for us, Mr. Uh, uh, Barber? Can you witness for us how did you see the rock running? Did you witness for the rock too? Did you witness for the balls of Moses? She knew how the Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Shinu hadha ya akhi. Shinu hal fataha saha hadhi. Tashhadu liman ya hadha. Rasulaka asbaha maskharata lil alami. Okay. We continue the story. Guys, should we continue? Shall we continue the story? Shall we continue the story? So now the stone, this filthy stone, Jewish stone, stole the clothes of the Prophet Musa. And by the way, Prophet Moses was an Arab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will tell you about him later. He was one of my cousins. So Moses now he after the storm ran away with his clothes and wallet and smartphone and man everything, everything Moses he have is gone. Moses he start chasing the stone, saying, "My clothes." My clothes, oh stone, my clothes, oh stone. Till the people of Beni Israel, which means children of Israel, saw him and said, By Allah, Aman Rabbi Aman, 
the balls of Moses is perfectly no defect. Like, what the heck? Anyone notice with me here something weird in the story? <clears throat> Who was the Muslim here when I when I helped me? The Jews, the Jews, they look at the body of Moses and they said, By Allah, there's no problem with his bowls. But hold on, nobody is amused about a stone is running. <laughs> like, what the heck? Not even a single Jew, he says, How God's sake, I mean, how for God's sake, how the stone is running with the clothes? It looked like the stone at that time they used to run with clothes normally, like every day. <laughs> Muhammad is the best story maker, man. How stupid donkey Muhammad you are. The Jews they only noticed the balls of Moses, but they did not notice that the stone is running. And guys, look what happened. The stone keep running, keep running, keep running until the stone arrived to the middle of the Jews. And then what Moses do? Moses did not grab his clothes and wear them. No, now he want to beat the stone. So he start beating the rock. Moses took his clothes and began to beat the stone. <laughs> Unbelievable. And by Allah, guys, Muhammad is adding something here. It's very serious. Hold on, hold on. When Muhammad he take an oath, it's mean must be true. By Allah, there are still six or seven marks present on the stone from the from the excessive excessive beating. <laughs> oh boy, I feel like dying of them. Oh it's true story. Muhammad is witnessing by Allah, I swear, brother Titter. The Titter did ask a question about the story with Edmonton in Tahir Bukhari about the board and the testicle of Prophet Musa. The Jews, they accused the Prophet Musa because they like to hurt the prophets, that his testicles are suffering from herenia. And Allah, he made a miracle. Musa, he will not show his testicle. And Allah was thinking how he can show and expose his testicle. So Allah, he waited for Musa. <laughs> oh boy, it's a miracle. God wanted to show the truth that the testicles of Musa are right, are fine. But the Jews are not amused by a stone running away. And Musa, he beat the stone and he have seven marks in it. And Muhammad is taking an oath by Allah. That's amazing. That's so powerful. I mean, if you are a person thinking to convert to Islam, it is time. It is time. Everything in the front of us proving to us that Muhammad is telling the truth. Who can deny that? Nobody. You cannot. I mean, what you can do about it? Look at this. Absolute wisdom. It's not like a fairy tale story, stupid story. No. Do we have any Muslim here? When I say something, what kind of a prophet this prophet is? And what kind of religion this religion is? And why you Muslim lie to us and say Muhammad, he was one of his names, the faithful, the truthful. That is the truthful? Is that the truth? Muhammad is swearing by Allah that he witnessed for that? 
and he says the present on the stone now where the stone where where is the stone how Muhammad he saw this stone <clears throat> hmm? yeah I'm a joker for sure I'm, I'm learning from the Prophet Muhammad until now I could not make a story like this but maybe one day things will get better and I will be improved Do we have any Muslim want to say something? That is Islam. And this is the wise prophet. His wives killed him. Gave him poison to get rid of him. To revenge from his faith and his behavior with them. And you Muslims accuse him to be killed by his wives. A prophet who spent his life telling us fairy story stories and make it and swear that this is a true story. How is stupid a human being to believe such a garbage? How is stupid a human being can believe such a thing for a second? And to Mazala, Rimaza Rajul Limaza. اتصل بي يا أخ حفص اتصل يا رجل يرعاك الله اشتهيت الأذاد وأنا ببغداد وليس معي عقد على النقد اتصل بي اتصل بي This guy he is saying to me in Arabic أنت مهزلة which means you are a joke I am a joke or you're a prophet If a Christian prince he made a video says that yesterday I put my clothes over a rock and some of my neighbors accuse me that my my balls have a problem so Allah wanted to prove to them that my balls is fine who is the joke tiller here be honest with Muslims Muslims be honest with me if I am the one who made this story you Muslims you will make it a comedy and you will laugh about me forever but just because it's your prophet just because it's the scam of Muhammad you don't dare even to say the truth. Do you really believe in this garbage? Uh, KG, yeah, I can come to Sweden. Actually, I'm going soon to, I might go to soon to Europe. Text me in Skype if you want, if you want to invite me to your church. The debate TV is my Skype. I am invited to do some work in Europe, so I might go. I'm not sure exactly when, but maybe soon. Guys, I'm going to go. I might go to Europe, and if any of you would like to have a selfie with me, and I will let you take a selfie with me next to the stone which have seven marks of it on it. I will bring the stone of Musa's with me. You are a Spanish from a Granada. Okay, so what does that mean? There is no Spanish is a Muslim unless he's a stupid. How was Spanish when he became a Muslim? He must be a stupid donkey. And call me, prove me wrong. Any Abdul? Who is Abdul? Have the courage to answer me. Why you are speaking about this matter of what you want to be to prove uh, the Muslim lady my, with my respect to you lady What I want to prove that Muhammad is a liar. Do you really believe in this story? Do you believe in the Quran that Allah he ordered Moses to beat a guy with the beef with the tongue of a cow or the penis of a cow and The guy come back to life because we beat him with the beef do you believe really that Suleiman he was a flying in a flying carpet as the Quran said? Or you believe that Suleiman he have a minister for irrigation and he was a bird and his part-time job is to find women who have no hair in their legs. This is what I'm trying to prove that your prophet is a scam. Prove me wrong. Any Abdul?
any Muslim is willing, you know, is willing to prove me wrong, call me and life. You see, here we are not the same as Muslims. They have a deen show, and then they don't let anyone to call them. Call me and answer me. Inta Yahudi. Okay, you see, guys, the Muslim saying to me, You are a Jew. So Moses was a Jew. Let us say I was a Jew. So Look how stupid they are. They cannot answer us. So now they accuse me to be a Jew as being a Jew is a crime. Well, Moses was a Jew. How come you say Moses was a prophet of Allah? He was a Jew or was a Hindu? As you see, your God is making stones move around. You believe everything in the Quran lady do you believe the Quran saying that the man he can beat you do you agree with that do you agree that your husband he can beat you are you okay with beating you hmm Any Muslim? <clears throat> what kind of religion promising the man all those stupid things? In the heaven, Allah, He promised me I will have a couch and I will have a pillow. Allah, please, thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank you more. All my life, I was dreaming to have a pillow. I want to have a pillow. I mean, I cannot believe that you are promising me a billow in the heaven. I cannot imagine myself spending my internal eternity without a billow. God, he promised me a pillow in heaven. I can get one for three dollars from Walmart. God, he promised me in heaven, I will have a cups which I can see through. I get them for free. God, you promised me I will sit in the top of a couch and I will wear a bracelet in my leg. Like, what the heck? Is that a gay thing? Bracelet? God, he promised me I will drink ginger. In I mean ginger, at least he promised me seven up, seven cola, Pepsi Cola. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Like, guys, what do you like to what do you like to drink in heaven? What kind of God he promised us in heaven? Ginger. Ginger mixed with wine. I mean, is that a luxury, supposedly? Ginger would, I want you to try it. Who is a Muslim when I try ginger with wine? Allah have only one cocktail in heaven. The cocktail of Allah is ginger with wine. I mean, that's amazing. That is astonishing. This God. Oof. Let us see, let us see. Can you have In the heaven, there is a fountain of water, and this fountain. Hey, Barbar, Barbar. See, guys, Barbar, look what Barbar said to me. Let me show you. Barbar, obviously, he is an Algerian or Moroccan. Because those people, they are attacked by my people, look what he called me. The Arab, we the Arab, we took over his land. So look what he called me in Arabic. This Muslim guy. Just to show you how hypocrite they are. 
the Muslim lady she is asking whoever loved the Prophet leave this chat <laughs> they can't answer Arabi Qadir an Arab filthy so he's calling me an Arab filthy he forgot that his prophet is an Arab too he forgot that his God is an Arab too he forgot that the Quran is an Arab too and he was the slave of the Arab I understand your pain I understand thank you for calling Muhammad a Qadir Barbar Al Qadir الذي كان يجامع نساءه في غسل واحد. The filthy is the one who go around and sleep with all his women without washing. Do you want me to show you the hadith? After he bang, 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 all, then he wash. Do you want me to show you the hadith? That is the filthy. The filthy is the one who take a shower in a dirt in the water, have dead dogs, and women of blood from period. That is not me. That is your prophet. Prove me wrong. Let us see. In the heaven, Allah the almighty he promised me that i will be wearing a green garment made in iran <laughs> Unbelievable. look like we are going to live in a hospital not in heaven <laughs> This is Quran. In heaven, we are going to make, we are going to wear a green garment made in Iran. Huh? Even in Iran, the Shia make it? At that time, those were not Shia, they were Kuffar. And then we are going to wear a bracelet from silver. Like what? What what? If if look at the reward, man, the reward is coming. You will have a bracelet from silver. That's amazing. I mean, who can who can resist this temptation, man? And then Allah He promised us a drink. And this drink is a cocktail. Take a note. It's a cup of wine mixed with ginger. You believe it? Ginger? Ginger in the heaven of Allah? We will drink wine with ginger? That is astonishing. Your God, Allah never heard of a vodka, Corona. Uh, I mean, there is tons of things, man. I mean, just uh, ginger. That's it. Any Abdul? Who is Abdul when I call me and explain to me why Allah promised me ginger? I mean, what is the big deal? This is heaven, wine and ginger. And this is the cocktail of Allah. And there we will wait for us a beautiful youth who they are like pearls. They are white. Why? What those what, what those youth are waiting for? Any Muslim want to tell us? Ten, tens of thousands of little boys, they are going to be naked waiting for me in the heaven. 
and they are very pretty. Anyone want to explain to us? Slavery, slavery in heaven for boys? Women slaves for sex, they call them the whore. They are going to be jailed in their tents. Boys, they are slaves. They call them woman. And those boys are very white, the same as the women. White? Very white? Yeah, because the Arab like white color. They cannot, they don't like to have sex with the black. Hello? They are racist. So Allah He promised them, <clears throat> even Muhammad he mentioned that the women in the heaven they will not be only white, they will be from the KKK organization. You see, the KKK, the founder of the KKK is Muhammad. This is why <clears throat> he is obsessed with the whiteness of his skin. <clears throat> Read with me. The prophet said the first batch of people who will enter paradise will be glittering like the full moon. Actually, we will see white. Their face will say glittering, shiny white like the moon. And the second batch will be less white like a brilliant star and then the man he will go to heaven he will find that there is is working for him and those hori they are transparent transparent what the heck yes transparent to the point you can see the marrows of their legs will be seen through the bones and the flesh and you are telling me that this is a prophet of God? This is a prophet of God? What's wrong? Why Muhammad don't promise us at least one single black lady? What's wrong with the black ladies? Muhammad, he don't like them. They are ugly for him. You know, beauty have nothing to do with the color. <clears throat> There is a beautiful white woman and there is a very beautiful black woman. Do we agree, guys? Actually, there is black women, they are extremely attractive. What's wrong with, with, with why they have to be white? The Muslims will be white, the slave women will be white, the boys are so white. Do you not do you see how much he concentrates in the white color? Even the Quran. Says, Yo mata biyadu wuju, what is what do you the day that faces will turn black and faces will turn white <clears throat> in the heaven of Allah? No black is allowed. This is the filthy racist religion. The Muslim they say to you, lying that Islam in the slavery. Uh, who are the those houris? They are made just for sex and they are jailed in their tent. The Quran confirmed that they are jailed. Jailed. They cannot see anyone except their master. Read it. Hurun maqsuratun fil khiyam. Guarded, close guarded. What a close guarded. <laughs> Let us see other translation. Close guarded, huh? Mm. Pure ones confined to their privileges. Yeah, right. Women are jailed in their tents. <clears throat> Ahmad Didat, my friend, we made him shish kebab. What Ahmad Didat? Ahmad Didat, he said many things proving to us that Islam is a stupid religion. Do you want me to, to prove it to you? I challenge you to bring to me one thing Ahmad Didat said and I will use it against Islam. Ahmad Didat, he chose people who do not know Islam to debate. The same as you. You sit like a coward. You don't dare to call me. Ahmed did that. He died like a rat. 
He said, may God mute me if I'm lying. And he was muted for seven years. What an ugly death. Like Muhammad. Muhammad he said, if I am inventing Quran, Allah said, I will cut his orta. We will cut his artery. And then we find that Muhammad in the hadith saying that the poison he ate in Khaybar is cutting his orta exactly as he wished. Who is a Muslim have the courage to call me? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, Barbar. ولكن دينك مسخرة وسخرية ولهذا أنت غير جريء على أن تكلمني اتصل اتصل guys this guy is saying let people enter Islam what's problem with you let them see by themselves okay I'm showing them they can enter who's holding them <laughs> and why you don't call us to people they will enter Islam we are giving you the chance to refute us so people would hear you and then because you are a smart and you have answers for our questions they will enter Islam why well, you don't do it a religion who made a fatwa in the head of a Mickey Mouse cannot be a smart religion you must be stupid to believe in it even Mickey Mouse they want to kill him just last Sunday, a group of Muslim families, they commit suicide bombing in the name of Allah, following the peace of Muhammad. If there is any Muslim, have the courage and the knowledge. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? He promised me that I will be reclining on a green cushion. Like what? And I will have a carpet cushion. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me find you a cushion because uh, I have a special design for my cushion. Please, Allah pro promised me a, a cushion. This is God. <laughs> This is this is God. Look at this dog. Look at this dog. He is happy and he have a cushion around him. This dog, he have it already. I'm going to wait to go to heaven. If you are a dog in America, you can get them for free. Look at him. He is sitting in the couch, better than the couch of Allah, and he have a lot of cushion around him. Hey, how are you doing, dog? By the way, Allah, he hates dogs. The prophet, he said, he wished they can kill all the dogs in the world. A God, he promised us a couch and a cushion, a pillow. And even he described the sheet of the cushion and the pillow. Hmm? My friend, my friend, Barbar, why you don't call me and tell me what Didat said so we can laugh together? Stop talking about Didat. Didat is a joker. He's a stupid. Didat is an insult to Islam. One of the videos of Didat, guys, you can search it yourself. Let me, let me, as long as he mentioned Didat, let me show you how Didat, how stupid he is. Didat, he said, the Jews, he said, not a single Jew believe that God has a son. Did that say it in his debate? Not a single Jew believe that God is a Trinity. This is what did that say? You can go right now and find it. If did that is debating me. I will make him shish kebab in two seconds because if we go in the Quran, my friend, we will find that your God saying that the Jews believe that there is a guy, his name is Uzair, he is son of Allah. 
This is how stupid did that is. He just destroyed the Quran. He just admitted that Allah is a liar and Muhammad is a fake prophet. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ عُزَيْرُ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَى الْمَسِيُّهُ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ But yet did that he said, not even a single Jew believe in the Trinity. Not even a single Jew associate God with any man. Not even a single Jew believed that God have a son. This is what did that say? I will tell you why did that he said that because he's a donkey, he never read the Quran. This guy he memorized as the rest of you. Where is your did that? Let him come to me. Where is your Zach and Naik? Bring him to me. Hello. Hello, Christian Prince. This is Simon. Hey Simon, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, I, I'd like to ask you something that I find very disturbing, mm -hmm. and um, I want to hear your take on it. And uh, maybe you can tell me if this is true. Um, it is from the Hadith Mishkat, Volume Three. I have it in PDF. Can I send it to you? <clears throat> no, just um, it's you need to see it. Like it's really, really disturbing. Take a snapshot and send it to me. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, is it in English or Arabic? It's both. Okay, so I take a snapshot so, of the Arabic one and send it to me. So okay, I, I have it here. Let me just save it for you. Um, because I've seen similar in um, in in Tirmidhi, mm. but I couldn't find it. But this one, it is actually in front of my face. So, um, okay, here it is. Did you get it? Let me see. I think it's coming. All right. So is this true? That is my question. Mishkat volume three. Yeah, this is we, we spoke about it before. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. This is about the creation of Adam from the right, uh, from the right, uh, the white people from the right shoulder and yeah, uh, yeah. the black people from the left shoulder. Right? Yeah, yeah. We spoke about this before. Yeah. Did, did you show it? Have people seen this? Uh, actually, somebody English, sent, I've never uh, seen it. Somebody yeah. sent to me before uh, a website in English, so okay. maybe I can find it and we can share it. Yeah, you, you can search in Google. Any one of you, it says that the uh, Allah He created the the white people from the right shoulder of uh, Adam and the black people from the left shoulder. Actually, I believe it's exists in my my first book, the deception, deception of Allah. I think. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can fight in English again. Uh, Allah created um, I've, I've heard about it, but to be honest, I did not true. I did not think that it was true. I thought that just some people make it up because this is black and white. You know, you can see to your own eyes. It's it's really really disgusting. Uh, I need to show some some black Muslim converts, and I need to know that it is authentic. It says it's Ahmad. Yeah, well, it is. Uh, What's your take on that? I found a website in English, in the front of me. Somebody's asking a question about it. Yeah. Uh, but let us uh, find. Uh, I have the link in PDF if you want instead of the file. No, no, no I do not need any. any, any okay. Me, I okay. do not need any file. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let us finish what we are talking about, and maybe we can go after that because we spoke about that previously in many videos, actually. Oh, okay. I just arrived, so yeah. Yeah, actually, I made a video. I think only uh, about about this topic. You no, know, yeah, we 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 spoke about it. But anyway, obviously, Muhammad is a racist because. Uh, um, you know, uh, the heaven is is for white people. The the slaves, even the slaves, there are they have to be white. Uh, the boys, they have to be white. The Muslim men before enter heaven in chapter twenty seven verse eighty two. If you go read the interpretation, uh, uh, at the, at the beast at Jassasa is going to come and will have uh, the the staff of Moses and the ring of Suleiman and will hit the. Uh, the Muslim with the staff of Moses and they will turn white and they will hit the infidels with this with the ring of Suleiman and they will turn black 
and this is before they enter heaven and then even when the Muslims enter heaven there's two angels waiting for him for them and each angel he give him a cup of water to drink one water you drink will make you white like star and the other water you drink will make you uh, have a diarrhea you will lose all the guilt you have mm. and then this is before you enter so there is a processing of whitening before you enter heaven the first processing is the the beast at just hit you with the staff of Moses make you white then you drink the water which is going to make you youth and white if yeah. you remember in the heaven we, we we just mentioned it that in the heaven there is a fountain is called Selsabil Selsabil is the fountain of youth the one you see in the in the movie called the pirate of the Caribbean you know so this is the fountain of youth people they drink from it and then they will turn and they will stay youth forever yeah yeah but uh, uh, according to Muslims, this fountain will not make you really youth like a, a young child, will make you a man in the age of Jesus, 33, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. will make you have the look of Joseph, because Joseph, according to Islam, was so handsome. So all people, they will drink from this uh, uh, fountain, they will turn to be 33 years old, and they will have the face of Prophet Joseph because Joseph was so handsome the age of Jesus the face of Joseph and imagine all of us there look like Joseph <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah. Anyway tons of stories endless But I, yeah, but I yeah. am disappointed that the one who called me as a Christian I was hoping that a Muslim would call all right I'll leave the room for someone but just to end <laughs> but just to end this 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 topic yeah is this authentic mishkat is this used by Muslims well this hadith is is authentic yes it is but however the Muslims okay. they try to deny it anyway but anyway okay. let me let me ask you if there's anything authentic in Islam anyway yeah, yeah of course there's nothing course. authentic in this religion Muhammad is not authentic his name is not Muhammad yeah. the, the the birth of Muhammad is not uh, authentic the, the name of the father of Muhammad cannot be true because how his father is, is a slave of Allah his name is a slave of Allah but he didn't believe in Allah yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> everything about Muhammad is not authentic but but whatever the Muslims say we will go with it yeah yeah, yeah. that's basically how you do it yeah and um, yeah yeah and and as um, as we know there's other hadiths that talk about the same thing you know your face will be white I think I found this one with Tirmidhi where he speaks about this, but this one is black and white. For those who have never seen it, speaks about, you know, Adam was it hit or Allah will hit Adam's right shoulders and he will have black children, and then he hits uh, not only his that, left shoulder. Not only that, he the, and the, the black one will go to hell. Yeah, the black children they will come and Allah will say is they go to hell and I don't care. Yeah, and the white yeah, people yeah. they will say to them go to heaven and I don't care right you know? so which means he don't care about justice like why they will go to hell and why they go to heaven they, he, it, it, he decided before he created them that according to Allah all the black will go to hell and all the white will go to heaven and this is why Muhammad he you see the racism of Islam is in everywhere the black stone used to be what used to be white like milk yeah right so yeah, yeah. and then the uh, uh, the sin of mankind made it black yeah so what what Muhammad is saying that the black stone when it was not in touch with sin was white so white white is is uh, 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 is, is, the, is the color of uh, of not uh, of, of a pure the black that's mean you are a sinner person this is why you are black Read with me carefully here. It says, The messenger of Allah said, The black stone descended from paradise, and it was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sin of the children of Adam. This, uh, some Muslims, they say to you, How Islam hate black color, but Muslims, we kiss black stone. No, you are not kissing the black stone. You are kissing the white stone. The color in the stone, this is the sin. The stone itself is white. All right, and this is the hadith in front of you. So, you Muslims, you are worshiping a white stone. Now, the Muslim they say to you, We we uh, we kiss this stone because it's coming from heaven. So, what if Allah sends you a donkey from heaven? You kiss him too. It's a stone. What is a stone? Why you kiss it? 
and this is not just a stone of respect your prophet he said that the the the, the black stone is the right hand of allah and muhammad he said that the stone in the day of judgment is going to have eyes and ears and is going to witness for the muslims yeah anyway yeah. let us hope that some muslims will call us and thank you very much uh, simon for calling Thank you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's continue our day, right? Sure. Anyway, uh, if you have a question, uh, call again. But I am really disappointed. You see, uh, Muslim, shame on you. Simon <laughs> is an infidel. He called me. You don't call me. Like, come on. It's not. It's not even fair. Why you let Simon speak? Take his place, and expose us. Expose Simon. Expose me. Answer us. Show us the truth. We are waiting. Thank you, my friend. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. I want a Muslim to call me. Who is a Muslim when I call? I'm getting messages in languages I don't understand. I speak only two languages. The rest, I speak them only when I'm alone, like Chinese, Urdu, you know. But when I am between the people, I speak only two languages. I am like Muhammad. Sometimes I speak all languages. Sometimes when I am alone. Anyone? Uh, yeah, here we go. Somebody, uh, thank you for sending the link about uh, the shoulder. All right, here we go. This is the link. Guys, thank you uh, uh, Tabby for sending the link. This is the link guys about uh, the hadith about the shoulder Allah strike uh, Allah uh, creating the the black people from the from the shoulder. All right. Hey, it's all right. Any Muslim? Everybody open this link and save the reference, please. Because later, if I need it, you no, know, I don't save reference. You know, for me, I don't need you really to save it. But uh, you guys save it in your browser. So in case we mention it again and somebody talk about it, you guys, you help and you you post uh, the link. Kabich? Now, who is the Muslim when I call me and get a reward to go to heaven? <clears throat> Anyone? <clears throat> <clears throat> Anyone? Who is a Muslim on a call? Well, as long as our sister here she posted this hadith, let us show the link on the screen. All right. This is the hadith. The Muslims they are talking about in their books and you do not need to be a genius to notice right away that this is a very racist cult read with me carefully Allah created Adam when he created him and he struck his right shoulder and there emitted from from it the white the white of spring as they were white ants he struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it the black of spring as if it were charcoal and uh, uh, he then said to those who they have been emitted from the right shoulder which means the white for paradise and i don't care muslim translation is i don't mind then he said those who they are emitted from the left shoulder are to hell and i don't care or i don't mind Muslim translation and this is Sahih at Turmudi any Muslim have an objection anyone Yeah, I, I, you see, uh, Muhammad, he uh, 
You see, Muhammad, the problem, he did not see around him Asian or Indian. He saw only black and white. If Muhammad, he ever, he saw uh, the fruit of the coconut, Muhammad will make the chapter, is called the chapter of the coconut, and he will mention it in the paradise. But because he never saw a coconut, so he did not talk about it. You know what I mean? Muhammad only speak about what he saw. There's no God. This guy is making things up. He saw around him black and white. Muhammad, he made a chapter speaking about the olive and the fig. Why? Because he did not see better. This is what he saw. The Quran is speaking about egg, palm date, and a gra a grape. And banana. Oh, don't forget the banana. And that's it. If Muhammad in his time there was smartphone, he would promise every Muslim iPhone 20 X. But he didn't know about it. So he's promising them what they know. And what he know? A couch, a pillow, simple furniture. For at that time, those Bedouin Arab, they are desperately poor and they don't have those things. They are Bedouin. They don't know even how to make those things. Their life is very simple. People sleep in the floor. If you go right now to Saudi Arabia, like lately, the Saudi, they made like an announcement. They found an amazing discovery in Saudi Arabia. There's nothing. You cannot find palaces in Saudi Arabia. Where is the history of Saudi Arabia? There's nothing because it's a Bedouin land. So he's speaking to the Bedouin and the Bedouin, they have dreams. And they all their life is about drinking ginger and wine. Ginger is like their tea. There's no tea. There's no coffee at that time for those Bedouin. Ginger. It's something they can get it from the ground. Their sweet is the palm date. This is why the Quran promised the Bedouin that they will have a, a heaven where there's no heat. Why? Because this, they are a Bedouin who live in the desert. If you live, if you are a person who live, if Muhammad live in Alaska, he will never say that you will stay in the shade in the heaven. Because people in Alaska, they are desperately waiting for the sun to come. But because the Bedouin, the Arab, they hated the God of the sun and they loved the God of the moon. Why the God of the sun was not so popular between the Arab? Anyone knows? Based on what I said? Why the God of the sun was not popular between the Arab? Who want to help me? To get the answer because simply as we said this is a desert and people in the desert the sun for them mean death it killed their grass it make their water disappear it brings suffering while the moon is when it is cool, it is nice, it is romantic, it is a time we can go and walk and we will not be fearing the heat and we will not die because of it. So the God of the moon was more popular between the Bedouin for he is the nice God. The sun God is dangerous. This is why Muhammad, he says, when you see the sun is coming up, don't pray. For shaitan come from between the two horns of the sun. Why Muhammad is saying that? Because he is an Arab speaking between the ignorant Arab. They believe that the evil of the sun come with it. How Muhammad explain the season? Anyone, uh, anyone remember? How Muhammad explained the summer and the winter and the cold?
Anyone? Do remember? <clears throat> Muhammad told the Muslims that the summer is coming from hell and the cold is coming from heaven. Let me let me see if I can find the height in English. <clears throat> uh. Let us see. All right. Read with me how Muhammad he explained heaven, sorry, he explained winter and summer. That will make you understand the mentality of this religion. This religion believe in the moon god, which is a cool, nice god. The hell, where where is the sun? The sun is the ugly god. It is hell. The fire said to Allah, O oh Lord, some part of mine have consumed the other. So allow me to ex excel in order to find some relief. It was a granted permission to take, to breathe. And he said, Allah, he allowed the sun, the, 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 the hellfire to do that once in the winter and other during the summer. Which means sometime in the winter, the winter is coming warm so muhammad explaining why the world why this winter is warm because allah allowed the hell to breathe and then muhammad continue explaining the season showing you that he is a false prophet saying uh whatever you perceive in the form of intense cold or hurting cold from the breathing of hell and whatever perceiving uh, from extreme heat or intense beat is from actually here here they, they made a, they made a mistake the cold is coming from heaven and the 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 hell is coming from the the the, the heat is coming from hell so muhammad explained the season in a very stupid way proving to us again that he's a false prophet as you see it in the front of your eyes. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? <clears throat> uh, guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you are new to our channel. And if you have a Muslim is willing to call me live. You see, I don't want to call it a debate. I don't debate Muslims. I don't debate Muslims for a very simple reason. Not a single one exists in this world today can debate me. So any Muslim, you do not need to set a date. You do not need to set a topic. Just call me. The Muslims, in order to debate someone, this is what they do. Let us set a topic. Do you know why they do that? Because they go to the internet and they print 1,000 pages. And then everybody knows what the topic. I mean, there's no surprise. 
a person who knows his religion he do not need to prepare for a topic the topic is Islam and bring it on and you are feel you feel free to ask me any question you want I do not need to prepare too but because they are fake self-proclaimed scholars and always the Muslim they want to debate you about something have nothing to do with Islam like about the Trinity uh, no problem call me and ask me about the Trinity call me you see we have no problem you do for you have no religion you have no prophet you have no God you have no book all what you have is maybe when we show you a hadith, you say, I don't accept the hadith. We show you the Quran, you don't accept the Quran. We show you the interpretation, you don't accept the interpretation. So what do you accept? A religion in the form of maybe. Abdul, who is Abdul willing to call me right now? Is that really how season happened? Hell and heaven, and Allah, He opened, He allowed him to breathe. This is how the seasons they occur. Any Muslim <clears throat> and that, don't forget that Muhammad the scientist Muhammad is a doctor in science he is an astronomer he is a doctor in biology he is a doctor in view he's, he's a he have a PhD in geography yeah this guy he knows everything Muhammad he explained to us even where the sun set in the Quran and in the Hadith. Which additional proof that Islam is nothing but a false cult. Muhammad he claimed that the sun set every day by going from point A to point B, which is under the throne of Allah. How you Muslims believe in such a madness? Muhammad even claimed that the sun set in a murky water, in a hot spring. How you Muslim believe in such a garbage? That is the words of your prophet and this is what confirmed in the Quran. Any Muslim have an objection? So today we spoke about many things. We spoke about the Muslims accusing Aisha and the daughter of, of, of Umar al-Khattab that both parties, because remember the wives of Muhammad, they were divided into two parties. The party of Hafsa, the daughter of Umar al-Khattab, and the party of Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr. And they accused both and the rest of the wives that they killed Muhammad by poison. However, Muhammad, he claimed that he was killed by the poison of the Jewish women. But regardless who is saying the truth, Muhammad or the Muslim Shia, Hezbollah, Iran, the Mullah of Iran, about who killed Muhammad, both ideas prove to us again that Muhammad is a false prophet because the Quran confirmed that Allah protect Muhammad from the human and even the genie. And if you remember, 
the Muslims claim that Allah he saved Jesus from being crucified because he they say Allah will never allowed his a prophet Jesus to be killed so then how Allah allowed his a prophet Muhammad to be killed by poison was Jesus more important than Muhammad obviously he was was Muhammad a person which is not important to Allah at all to the point he allowed him to die in a such painful way four years of humiliation and he vomit whatever he eat Islam is a collection of contradiction The more you read about it, the more you notice that this is a stupid religion. Remember, if you like to have a handy reference in your hand, you always can get my books from Amazon. You can go to Amazon.com and just type Christian Prince books and you will find the list of my books. And soon we will have two more books. I just published one just two days ago. It's a German book. And soon we will have another two English books. It's called Six and Allah. And those books will concentrate in the impact of sexuality in this cult. It's called Islam. So it's going to be a very important uh, uh, book to read. And guys, you believe it or not, the Muslims, they made a review of my book when it's not published yet. Let me show you. Do you believe it? The book is not even available in Germany. I'm getting a review for the book is not even published. They did not buy it yet. No, you can't even buy it yet. It's not available. And the Muslim, they start giving me a review. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable man, unbelievable. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim here would like to call me? Anyone? If you are new, don't forget please to subscribe because here you can find a lot of funny debates. When Muslims they call us, it is really hilarious. So try to get us some Muslims to call us. And guys, again, anyone want to invite me to his church or etc. Uh, as you know, I do it for free. Just let me know. Feel free to call me in Skype anytime you wish to tell me about it. All what I want from Allah is to make me white when I go to heaven, man. This is the only reward I want. <laughs> what a stupid religion. All what I want from Allah is to give me a couch and a pillow. And I want to drink a wine mixed with ginger. That is my wish. That's my dream. And I will have 80,000 women. All of them, they have one name, one face. They look the same, the same height, the same age. I mean, how stupid that is. All the women look the same. So what the point? If I sleep with the first one, or all of them what is the point all of them look the same they have one name they sing one song and they are the same age and they have the same look isn't it amazing hmm? <clears throat>
in the top of that all of us we will look the same as the face of G of, uh, of Joseph and we will be in the age of Jesus I mean what kind of heaven everybody look the same what a boring heaven Do we have any Abdul to say anything? Any Abdul? All right. So, guys, take a note. Starting from today, we are going to broadcast in Arabian Prophet. Now, sometime I switch different channels for reasons. Uh, maybe we do not need to discuss them, but it's better to to have others to back as a backup. You know, we have many channels for backup. So it doesn't make any difference anyway, but uh, it's better to have backup always in case, right? So please subscribe to all my channels so you can be always updated and don't forget to turn on your notification so you're, you, you will be notified when we have a live broadcast. But usually I try my best to do every, every day at 4.30 unless I'm busy with something. Like as an example, my four mother-in-law coming to visit me. It's not easy. You have four wives. Each one of them, she get a pregnant every ten, eight, nine months. Sometimes even seven, because I'm strong like my the Prophet Muhammad. Sometimes we, sometimes we Muslim, we can make a woman be pregnant for four years, as what happened to the Prophet Muhammad, as an example. He was born four years after his father death, because the sperm of Arab men are very strong. You cannot kill it. I mean, you take like look. According to science, a, science, a sperm of a man die within 24, 72 hours. According to science, the sperm of an Arab people like us live for years, man, 10 years. I can show you from the interpretation of the Quran how the Muslims believe that a woman, she can be pregnant from her dead husband 10 years after he passed away. So don't be surprised if you are a female and you marry from an Arab boy that after 10 years from divorcing him or he pass away, you might get a pregnant from him. And this is all explained in the books of Allah and Islam, which is amazing, astonishing. Any Muslim have, a, have anything to say? Allah knows best. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And uh, tomorrow I will do my best to be here at 4.30. Uh, so be with us. And I hope tomorrow we will have some Muslims to call. Sadly, today, no, not even a single Muslim called us. Tell your friends about what we do here. Subscribe, share links, and let us spread the truth. And the truth will set you free. I don't hate the Muslims. I don't hate anyone. I hate lies. A person who promised me heaven full of slaves is an insult for a human race. A heaven which you promised me to be white is a racist heaven. I don't want it. A heaven who promised me an endless penis is a pimp porn star heaven i don't belong to it a heaven which you promise a woman that she will be having an ass of one mile it's a mad size ass god a heaven who promised me little boys to be my slaves for eternity is a filthy disgusting child abuse heaven how a human being can belong to such a cult how a human being, a mother and a father and four children, they commit suicide just yesterday, killing as many Christians they can just to make this God, Dracula, happy. Jesus said, from their fruits you shall know them. And the fruits of Islam is ugly and disgusting. And we are here to help the Muslims to understand that the God who wants you to die for him, obviously he is a fake God. For he, if it's a true God, 
he can do the job himself if your God want to kill us why he don't do it why he needed to die for him the way of heaven in Islam is a bloodshed and that is satanic there's no way God enjoying shedding the blood of a human being killing each other the only one who enjoy that is the devil Thank you very much for watching and may the Lord keep you in good health and wealth and we pray that the Muslims will understand and they will wake up and there will be people who they are free from false promises which is bringing nothing but the bloodshed and crimes and violence and chaos in the world be with God and God is love not with the devil and the devil is all about hate and lies. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon again. God bless you. Bye-bye.